Welcome along to another opposition preview. And this Sunday, Saints complete a double header of Merseyside meetings, welcoming the blue half to St. Mary's. Uh, so here to give us a low down on Everton as Ped from Toffee TV. How are you, mate? I'm all right in general. Football wise, I'm not, but <laughs> it's it's uh, it's been a bit of a disaster this season. So. Um... Hopefully turn in the corner, but we'll wait and see. Mm, and, well, we're almost in the same boat at the moment, not picking up much results. But uh, it's probably fair to say that both teams haven't lived up, up to expectations so far. Uh, Everton find themselves 16th in the table, 12 points. Saints, only a point ahead of them, could well be dragged into that sort of mould, that little group of relegation candidates. Maybe too early to tell. But uh, Koeman obviously sacked earlier on the season. Everton haven't announced a new manager. Why hasn't it happened? Is it clicking for David Unsworth? The reason it hasn't happened is they simply can't decide on 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 the tar- on the targets, or they couldn't decide on the targets. The target now seems to be uh, Marco Silva, but obviously getting him out of Watford is going to be difficult. And and it's it's whether they persist trying for him or they just say no, we'll come back in the summer and maybe put David Unsworth in charge. It's hard to know whether a whether a um, whether it's clicking for him, he's got four points out of the last couple of games, which has been okay. The performances haven't been brilliant, but it's still essentially the team that uh, Ronald Koeman and, and Steve Walsh have have brought together. So there's not much David Unsworth can do. He's actually reverting away from a lot of the new players and gone back to a lot of these sort of old players who've been pushed out by Koeman and has gone back to a more sort of simpler way of doing things and it's really hard you just you don't know you you don't really know whether Dave Williams is doing a good job or not um, and we probably won't know until he's given a longer run or if he's given a longer run as the manager So uh, obviously one player relishing his chance in the first team since Koeman's sack Umar Nias scored three and four recently uh, but he will be ruled out I've seen your little video uh, definitely ruled out for the game on Sunday two game ban S- uh, successful deception of a match official at a first in the Premier League to be banned for diving. Yeah, um, <laughs> I don't know what to say about this one. I really don't. Um, successful deception. That is that's a new one on me. I, listen, I I fully understand the new rules, and I'm I am I am behind the new rules. I just I just I know he's a, he's an Everton player, so obviously I'm going to be slightly biased, but I just, I, I just don't get it. I mean, it, it was a, listen, it's a soft pen. I appreciate that. But was it a dive? Well, it was contact. Um, and we've seen other players get away with contact this season. So I don't see the difference in that. And also, I think the uh, the punishment, there's two different punishments for the same crime. If he'd been caught by the referee at the time, he would have been booked. But because it's after the game, and we've seen to have been benefit- benefited from it, he gets a two-match ban, which is, I, I, I find that really, really strange. The the half to come down on, on dive, and I, I fully appreciate that. I just don't know whether this was is an instance of it. I don't know how they can prove that he dived when he was running in the box and there was contact. So it's a strange one. We'll miss him. He's been the spark, I think, recently. You know, obviously his story's you know, his story's magnificent, it really is. You know, from from what what's happened, um to what happened to him when we bought him, to Ronald Koeman just basically saying he didn't want him, um, pushing him way to Hull. And ending up having to have him because there was no strikers, and to hit, to see him outlast Ronald Koeman is is an absolutely spectacular football story um, that probably all football fans, you know, probably like or, or you know would appreciate. Um, and we're going to miss him because what he lacks in technique, and he, he does lack a lot in technique. Um, he just he's just raw. He has this raw ability to put defenders under pressure, and that's simply what defenders don't like. Um, you know, if defenders were any good, they'd play up front, let's be honest, <laughs> or in midfield. So we're going to miss them desperately, I think. So, I mean, going into the game, Everton yet to win on the road this season. Uh, it'd be typical of Saints to go over, give away another record this season. You said Nias was the spark, but are there anyone else that sh- we should be aware of? You know, you're absolutely stacked of attacking midfielders. Uh, can you give us a, uh, a prediction, mate? Well, I mean, we haven't won since January away in the Premier League, so... I don't know if that'll continue this week. I think we'll be hard. We're, we're, we're looking increasingly like we've got a little bit more spirit about us, which, again, 
was something that was lacking under Ronald Koeman. I, I think, you know, you we've got a lot of good players. It's just that we don't know how to fit them together. So we've got the likes of Wayne Rooney, the likes of the likes of Sigurdsson, young, younger players like Dominic Carvalhoon. I, I think it'll be a draw, if I'm, if I'm perfectly honest. I think it'll be a draw. I don't know whether... And I, and I think both teams might take that, although the need for a win for both teams is really strong. I appreciate that. But there's all, almost the idea of not wanting to lose to a team that's right next to you in the table as well. So I think both teams will start with the best intentions. I just imagine if it goes on for like 70 minutes, both teams might settle for that. But it, yes, and it might go the opposite way. David Unsworth's had a tendency to be quite adventurous late on in games. We've seen that against Watford. We've even seen that on Saturday against Crystal Palace. But I, I'm going to go for a 2-2, um, if I'm honest, because we can't defend, but we seem to have turned the corner of scoring goals. And, you know, I think you you, you lads, although may, might be playing too well, have always um, seemed to have done quite well against us down there at St Mary's. So I'm going to go for a 2-2. Some goals and some excitement, hopefully, at St Mary's. And before you go, mate, as a bonus... Uh, can you tell us your favourite Everton player over the years to wear a moustache? Oh, Derek Mountfield. Before your time, I know, but a centre for a, a centre back who scored twelve goals in the season in when we won the league in nineteen eighty five. A centre back scoring twelve goals, that's amazing. And he's he's a tough fella as well. We get him on the show quite regularly, so um top moustache in the back in the day. Brilliant stuff. And uh, and if you can, go ahead and uh, donate to our Movember page. The link uh, is down in the description. All raising money for uh, for men's health, prostate cancer, testicular cancer, and uh, men's mental health. And if you haven't already, please do go ahead and check out Toffee TV. If the reason why uh, you haven't subscribed, go over there and check them out. I'm sure there'll be an instant match reaction after the game. Ped, thanks for joining us, mate. Cheers, mate. Thanks for having me. And go ahead and leave us your predictions for Sunday's match. Leave us your likes, your comments, and subscribe for more.